Today I'm going to return, final turn, this rough, roughed out Bradford Pear blank that I turned about two and a half years ago. Fellow YouTuber and, and wood turner Larry Randolph, the Missouri wood turner, sent Sam Angelo and I a beautiful Bradford Pear blank, all, all three blanks cutting out, cut out of the same tree. It's part of an experiment on uh, rough turning and then checking the drying conditions in different, different parts of the country. It weighed 10 kilos, or about 22 pounds, when, uh, as a rough blank. Larry lives in Missouri. Sam lives in uh, Billings, Montana. And, I, of course, I live here in, uh, in the Atlanta area in Georgia. So I rough turned this bowl on October the 19th, 2019. And the weight at that time was 6 pounds and 10 ounces. You can catch that original video of me rough turning that blank and talk about drying in this video here. In just three months, this rough turn bowl had lost most of its weight. You can tell in the last, oh, year and a half or so, it's only lost about two more ounces. I used Titan Power Grip Jaws uh, when I first turned this bowl. The safe recommendation is to turn a ten and one third of the, the size of the diameter of the bowl. Uh, certainly when you turn it green, you need to leave it a little bit larger because you don't want an optimum tenon size. You want one a little large because it's going to go oval with the turning. Now I have turned bowls as, as large as 10, even 12 inches with the standard 2 inch jaws, but they weren't as nearly as thick as this. A, a platter would be somewhat safe, but uh, you need to, ideally this is not your best choice on a bowl this size or you're liable to rip it out of the chuck. So I uh, use this friction uh, chuck that I, I put it in my power grip jaws and put a little piece of closed cell foam to give it a little better uh, friction against the bottom of the irregular shaped bowl. And bring up the tail stock. And tail stock. And I start to start shaping. I'm using a half inch bowl gouge. I'm Going back to trying to steward that in 40-40 grind, seeing how that, that works. Uh, I've used it in the past, but you got to hand, um, hand sharpen it. This Bradford pear is very, very hardwood, very dry, dusty, kind of brittle. Uh, sharp tools. I'm doing a push cut. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, push in the direction of the flute. This is a fairly thick blank. It had to be, you know, had to be trued up on the inside and outside. That's that's the nature of uh, having a round bowl and having to rough turn it and let it dry. Now I'm using this bowl gouge as a shear scraper to just kind of refine the edges a little bit, taking it rid of some minor little little ripples and tool marks off just and then I come back with a uh, shear scraper a spear point shear scraper to do the work it's a little faster and easier to sharpen than a bowl gouge so I resorted to this one old Harbor Freight spindle uh, skew that I reground you can see the nice shavings I got I didn't uh, wasn't able to record making these three little B grooves, but I just took a point tool, put them in there, made those little grooves. Now I'm going to come back with a spindle gouge and, and actually turn them into, into beads. Sand the sand the uh, the bowl on the outside. Now I reversed it, and we're just facing it off. Got to swing that handle real far out because that that bevel's got to be 90 degrees of the wood to keep it from skating. And of course, it's an irregular edge there, so. 
takes just a little bit of effort to kind of anchor the tool and make those initial cuts so it'll has a, have a shoulder to ride on. And then once you get that shoulder, it's pretty easy to go in there and keep on hollowing that bowl out. I'm only going about two-thirds of the way down on the hollow and the bottom I'm going to deal with then, with a uh, bottom feeder in a little while after I get the wall to uniform thickness. Uh, now I'm coming back, thinning them out a little bit. Coming in a little bit of a shadow line there, just be, just below the, uh, the rim. And a little nice detail with that shadow line going in a little bit. Let those chips fly. The dark area the bottom is, is not as out of round as, as the side. So with that 40-40 grind, it's too hard to turn, make that turn around the bottom. Now I'm using a little heavier, actually I'm using a spear uh, point scraper to add a little bead on the rim. Just going in there and, and just refining the edge there, shaping that bead. That's the safest way on a rim is to use scraper. Now here, here's that bottom feeder. It's a cheap Benjamin Best gouge. Uh, it's, it's a one trick pony. I don't use it that often. It's extending a long way off the tool rest, so I'm having a, a very a, a challenge. Even with a very long handle braced on my uh, hip, I'm having a very hard time keeping this thing from bouncing and, 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 and getting a smooth cut. So I'm getting some getting some ripples along the bottom. So I measure the depth of it, and you, your hands are more sensitive to the eyes. You, know, you want to feel that curve. So now I'm in there with a really thick, heavy, negative rake scraper just to get rid of those those ripples at the bottom that I wasn't able to cut out with that bottom feeder. No shame in using a scraper. This is a heavy duty one. Again, it's a negative rake. Uh, I've got a video on negative rake scrapers here if you're interested in, in watching. Just refine those edges. If this was a regular conventional scraper, I could not come out around the rim like this or it would explode. But the negative rake scraper allows you to do that. Again, I stop the tool. I don't like to touch spinning wood. Feel that curve. Still got a little bit of a little bit of a bulge there near the bottom. I'm going to mark that with a pencil. More easily identify where I need to come back in there with a scraper. Check the depth one more time. See how much how much I can come down. Just look at the end of that. See where it is. I refine that bottom, get a nice smooth, continuous curve, no flats. You can feel that shape. Yep, this feels good. Kind of go in there and sand. I go through all the different grips, power sanding. So now we're going to remove the tenon on the bowl. Let me show you a pretty traditional way to do that. It doesn't require any, any special equipment to speak of. So I'm going to use a, a friction chuck. Depending on the shape of the rim, I'd either use a round, I'd, I'd use one of my vacuum chuck uh, with fun foam on it. But in this case, my rim is uh, flat. This should work just uh, perfectly well. I've got a threaded flat plate here with some that 1 16th inch closed cell foam. So I'm simply going to put my bowl on it. I've still left that dimple. That's very important. I always leave that that live center dimple. Put that on here. Bring up in my live center here. In this case I'm going to use a cone center. I'll show you why in just a moment. getting used to some of the little features. This heavier banjo is certainly one of them. There. This Acme thread goes out a lot faster. 
which is nice when you spin it, it just moves in and out a lot faster. So, okay, so now I've got a nice even tension on it. Get my tool rest in here where I can start removing that tenon. I'm going to use this half inch bowl gouge to just start wasting away the tenon coming straight in. I could do it this way, but this is a little harder because I'd be hitting more in grain. This way it's all tends to be side grain. Get the speed up just a little bit. About 800 for this bowl. Doesn't need to be too, too much faster than that. cone center it's easier to get in close so now I want to just start cleaning this up a little bit and that's looking good just a little bit proud on the outside now before I waste this too far away I want to to decide if I want to do anything special at the at the bottom on this uh, to finish this last shape. I've got a few tool marks I need to clean up. I'll come in there with a negative rake a scraper. Take care of that. High pressure. see if I can't uh, do a little bit of job of that and before I do it because this this Bradford pear is very brittle I'm going to just spray a little bit of water on it to see if I can't harden it a little bit matter of fact I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub a little wax on it maybe this little sanding butter will do just fine just to stiffen the fibers up just a little bit here where it's where it's tearing out this up on its side, just very gently just press it, very light pressure. And I think sandpaper will do the rest of that too to blend this in. Got a few little ripples here. I need to smooth that out just a little bit more. So we're going to do that with, with a bit of a, a shear scrape. Back and forth. Glued almost at 9 o'clock. That's cleaned up nicely, nothing that uh, sanding can't take care of. I want to put just a little bit of a bead, bead there, so I'm going to use my point tool for that, I think. Because it's a wide bowl, I think I can come in here without too much trouble and just put a couple of little accent rings. Now 
going to need to cut this dove, this little stub down a little bit, so I'm going to use a, a detail gouge. It's got a long point, makes it easy to get down in there. Raise the tool rest just a little bit. Clears. Now I can come in here and just start wasting this little nubbin down. is probably as close we need to try to do it with it turning now I'll just cut that off with a flush cut saw see which way the grain's going this way and that takes care of it. we can sand the rest of it off without any problem now you can hold your sanding mandrel with a uh, Jacobs chuck drill chuck if you like I find it easier to use this collet system since I have it and I don't have to worry about a draw bar so now we're just going to slow the speed down a little bit get this the rest out of the way Now you just come in here, hold it with two hands, just keep turning around so you don't get it too flat in one spot. This video was helpful to you. Give it a thumbs up so other wood turners can find it. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.